welcome you to our awards night for 2015. This is a, this is a great night as we, uh, we recognize the achievement of our students throughout the year. I want to uh, tell you that the students have prepared a PowerPoint presentation that celebrates the year for the class of 2015 and it's going to be shown immediately after awards night uh, in the McCulloch Center for the Arts in the Keats Auditorium. And at the same time, I invite you to look at the senior class art exhibit in the Griffiths Gallery. It is beautiful, it's wonderful, you really should take advantage of seeing that. The students will be taking their art tonight, so it won't be up tomorrow, so I really encourage you to look at that, as well as there's a photography exhibit uh, in the tower, too, so you should see that. Uh, always at this time of year, we want to recognize our longtime faculty and staff members who have been with us for 25 years or more. On the staff, we want to recognize Mrs. Mickey Achille for 26 years, and Mr. Bill Coyle, who's been here for 29 years. And then uh, on the faculty side, we have Holly Mendes, who's been here for 27 years. Wanda Gilbert, who's been here for 28 years. Sandra Carbone for 31 years. Mama McGann for 31 years. And our senior master, Mr. Doug Johnson, for 34 years. I want to thank them for their dedicated service. The first award tonight is the uh, Rhode Island Scholar Award. So on behalf of the Rhode Island Higher Education Assistance Authority and the governor, it is my pleasure to present the Rhode Island Scholar Award to two deserving members of the senior class. This award recognizes high academic achievement and is presented to students who have achieved a combined score of at least 1,300 on the SAT critical reading and math sections and also to students who have scored at least a 29 on the ACT testing. The following are the young people who have earned this special distinction. Please welcome Hannah Bork and Phil Pang. The Secretary of State Civic Leadership Award has already been presented to two of our students during a ceremony at the Rhode Island State House in recognition of their outstanding leadership skills, their strong academic record, and civic contributions made to their school and community. Uh, we're going to ask them to stand. The recipients this year are Hannah Bork and Colton McAdams. One of our senior class students applied for a scholarship through the Elks National Foundation Most Valuable Student Contest, evaluated by the Rhode Island State Elks Association. And we are pleased to announce that in January 2015, the Bristol County Elks Lodge awarded an $800 scholarship to Colton McAdams. Earlier this evening, we uh, recognized our National Honor Society, and at awards night, we always recognize them publicly in front of the whole school. So we're going to ask to come up to the platform when I announce your name, but first let me say something about the National Honor Society. The National Honor Society was started nine years ago by Mrs. Molo, who is leaving us. We want to thank her for all her efforts and work. And the National Honor Society's purpose is to create enthusiasm for scholarship, to stimulate a desire to render service, to promote leadership, and to develop character in the students. And the students that we're going to recognize tonight exemplify all of those. So would you please, I'm going to ask the following students to come up to the stage. Douglas Anthony, <laughs> Hannah Bork, Diana Sissoko, 
Jack Clark, who is the president. Ida Oboibe. Lindsay Holker, who is the treasurer. J. Rodney Lynch. Owen Robinson, who is a historian. Maxwell Schuster. Michael Shang. Ashley Shapiro, who is the vice president. Morgan Silver, who is the secretary. And Clivia Wang. We also had the pleasure to induct new members, all juniors, this earlier today, and we'd like to add them to come up as well. Mind Ekra Monset and Enya Audet, Luke Montabano, Naya Moore, Colin White, and Barbara Wu. I, I actually never made the National Honor Society, so. Um, we want to congratulate them because you had to have a 3.5 average and show great character in citizenship and do community service. We just think we're very proud of this group of young men and young women. They've done an outstanding job. We wish the seniors well as they go on to college and the juniors. We look forward to having them lead our school next year. So let's give them another round of applause. Every year at the awards night, the St. Andrews Parents Association, SAPA, uh, gives a community scholarship award. And I'm going to ask the co-chairs, Dean Martineau, Martineau and the co-secretary, Steve Peck, to come up and award the scholarship. Hi, I'm Dean Martineau. My wife Nancy and I were the co-chairs uh, for the past two years. Steve and Leslie Peck were the co-secretaries. Tiffany Duda, uh, she's the treasurer. And um, we've had help, a lot of help from Brenda and now Molly Robinson, Brenda Migliaccio. Big thanks for the adult supervision with, the, uh, with uh, all the stuff we've done. And if just, uh, Steve's gonna tell a little bit about what SAPA does, but all the parents pay dues when you pay your tuition bill, and we appreciate that. And um, we do fundraisers, and the money goes to a lot of the things that we do on campus, like we donated money to build the pavilion next to the tennis courts. We've donated money for the bicycle racks, for some of the uh, steel iron, uh, wrought iron lawn furniture that you see near the dining hall. And it's a good way if you can get involved, if your kids are gonna be here next year, you should get involved because you find out um, stuff that's going on in the school. It's a good way to um, get to be part of the community. And we're really grateful to John and Sheila for all their service. And I just wanna personally thank them. And we're very grateful um, for the four years that Wyatt has been here. So thank you very much and uh, good luck. Thanks, Dean. I'm very happy to be here tonight uh, on behalf of the St. Andrews Parents Association, also known as SAPA. Since 2008, SAPA has generously pledged to award a $500 scholarship to a college-bound graduating senior class member who best represents how community service has made a difference in his or her life. Seniors interested in applying for this scholarship submit a $500, uh, 500, yeah, $500 <laughs> to Dean. 500 word essay to the development office, noting all of his or her community service projects and the impact this service has had on his or her life. We're extremely pleased that this year we're able to present two scholarships to individuals who stood out above the crowd. These students exemplify the generosity of spirit integral to the self-giving aspect of our community, and in particular have conveyed that they understand the true meaning 
of helping others. To quote one of this year's scholarship recipients, community service is not about the specific quota that I have to fulfill to graduate or what I may be getting out of it, but rather it's about what I'm able to put into it so that others may ultimately benefit. That quota is just the thing that helped our second recipient get his start in community service, but it was St. Andrew's teachers that inspired him to become even more involved. He said, teachers like Mr. Bork, Mr. Tisdale, and Mrs. Buckley acted as my inspiration and helped me to realize what kind of person I wanted to be. I genuinely believe that this change in my lifestyle of volunteering and aspiring to become the best person I can be through helping others has made me a happier person. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipients of the St. Andrews Parents Association Commitment to Community Scholarships, Hannah Bork and Colton McAdams. Hi, everyone. <laughs> my name is Maria DeRay. I am mother to Antonio, and my son John graduated in 2013. Joining me on stage are the three captains of the varsity soccer team, Wyatt, Jules, and Vasso, and Colton and Hannah. Um, in, in last fall, the boys' uh, varsity soccer team won the NEPSAC championship. It was a great ride. Um, Coach Bork and Coach Lesio did a great job with these boys, great group of boys. And I can't tell you how excited Headmaster Martin was when they won. So for those of you who weren't there, we brought a little reminder for you. Who has that one? Upside down, the other way. Yeah, one minute. One minute. I'd like to turn the mic over to Wyatt. He has a few words to say. We'd like to dedicate a uh, jersey to Mr. Martin and honor the soccer team to make him an honorary member of our soccer uh, championship team. Every parent um, who decides to send their child to St. Andrews has a story to tell, and I'm going to make this story short and sweet. When my son Antonio was 10 years old and I went to a parent-teacher conference, the teacher told me that Antonio was never going to go to college and that I should prepare him for a different kind of life. Um, she. She did something that no one has ever been able to do before or since, which is to leave me speechless. Um, so after a few days of crying and crying, my husband assured me that we were going to, Tony would be fine and we were gonna send him to a place that told children what they can do instead of what they can't do. And of course that place is St. Andrews. And I think that train of thought begins at the top with Headmaster Martin. He fosters a culture here that all children can learn, they can all live their dreams, and they can all love school. And I watched my son go from a child who hated school 
to a child that loved coming here, who loved school and loved his teachers. I have a favorite quote of mine from Lady Bird Johnson. Children are likely to live up to what you will believe of them. And here at St. Andrews, there's great belief in these kids. The class of 2015, great group of kids. And they would like to thank Headmaster Martin for always believing in their dreams and their success. So before we do that, we have a gift for Sheila Martin. We have 19 red roses for you, because let's face it, everybody, behind every successful man is a good woman. Class of 2015 would like to present this gift to Headmaster Martin and Sheila, and we hope that you always think about these kids when you use these gifts. Thank you, everybody. I should retire every year. This is great. <laughs> I have more clothes now to wear. It's, uh, it's really great. I Thank you so much. I, I, uh, I'll have more to say tomorrow, but, I, but I'm, I'm really speechless, but I am speechless. I, I, uh, I really appreciate it very much. Um, okay, let's go on. Uh, Happy White Student Art Collection. The students, uh, St. Andrews School purchases two pieces of outstanding art by our senior students each year for the Happy White Student Art Collection in honor of Mary Teft Happy White, who brought so much art to our school. I'd like to invite uh, Ben White, who is a King Menelist and a graduate of St. Andrews School 2008 to the podium. Ben? Ben is uh, Happy White's grandson, and, he, uh, and we're just honored that he's here tonight to help us present the Happy White Award. Uh, Happy was a wonderful woman, someone that I got to know very well. I actually, she gave me a piece of art before she passed away, and uh, it's in the a library, which I'm going to take from the library when I leave. <laughs> this O'Brien. Uh, <laughs> the judge of our senior art exhibit 2015 was Justin Stanley. He is a local graphic artist and sculptor who was this year, school year's visiting artist under the Happy White Endowment for the Visual Arts. His artistic philosophy takes raw found objects and reimagines them into sculpture, and our students had the opportunity to work with him using simple materials to create imaginative creatures and their habitats. Mr. Stanley is the founder and creative director of the active arts collaborative Red Fork Empire. He's the one that created the recognizable character of the emperor, which has been led to a television appearance and magazine interviews. He's a graduate of Ring Ling College, and his work has been featured in numerous ma galleries. galleries. He, was our, uh, he was our judge this year. And so we have uh, two uh, uh, presentations for outstanding artwork. Uh, There's a $100 check each. The first is for a three-dimensional work. And do we have it somewhere? OK. And it's going to go, it's called Octopus Vessel and Dishes, and it's by Ethan Rigel. And then we have a two-dimensional work. It's a watercolor self-portrait, and this year it's, it's one by John McConnell.
we started purchasing uh, our students' uh, art uh, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago, and we have a whole collection of it. And as I say every year, somebody's going to make it big someday, and we're going to sell their art and make a lot of money for the school. <laughs> All right, the next is the David Alexander McDonald Jr. Class of 47 History Prize. This prize honors the memory of David McDonald, who was an avid student of history through his entire life. Check is presented to a graduating senior who excels in history through reading. Uh, this year, the $100 check and prize goes to Owen Robinson. Bertha Sawyer Award is given, it was, sorry, the Bertha Sawyer Award. Bertha Sawyer was the assistant to the headmasters for 50 years, from 1918 to 1968. It's a long time. This award is presented to students who have attended St. Andrews School for all seven years of grades 6 through 12. And this year there are five recipients. We asked them to come to the stage. Jake Kuto, Tony DeRay, Mike Perry, Sebastian Seguera, and Kyle White. next award is one of my favorite awards. It's called the Gladys Trudeau Fisher Award. Uh, it, is, uh, it was given a long time ago by a man named Mars Bishop, who was a loyal St. Andrews trustee. Uh, it is in honor of his, uh, his longtime executive assistant, Gladys Trudeau. It's a cash award. It's given annually to a faculty member who has, during the current school year, provided exemplary service to the student body by actions including, but not limited to, exceptional teaching skills, compassion, integrity, loyalty, and self-discipline. This year, the Trudeau Fisher Award goes to Nancy Azano. I'd like to invite the St. Andrews Chorus on the direction of Mrs. Molo to come and provide us her musical selections. <laughs>
next series of awards are Academic Awards of Excellence. Uh, they are a recognition of individuals who've done a wonderful job in different departments in the school. The first Academic Award of Excellence for English goes to Morgan Silva. The Academic Award for History goes to Hannah Bork. The Academic Award for Math goes to Binbing Ling. The Academic Award for Science goes to Hannah Bork. And while she's coming up, the World Language Award goes to Hannah Bork. Why is Alex? She said, should I sit in a chair? I said, no. <laughs> All right, Technology Award goes to Owen Robinson. <laughs> Owen reminded me he won it three years in a row. That's a great job. I'm going to miss you. Um, visual Art goes to Jackie Andre. And the Music Award goes to Charles Hahn. Some of you uh, may not know, but Charles is one of the most excellent oboe players uh, around. He's uh, nationally known in China. He's a tremendous oboe player. We're lucky to have him here with us. The University of Rhode Island Alumni Award is given to the junior who best displays the outstanding personal attributes of integrity, industriousness, and loyalty, combined with an exemplary record of service to the school and community. This year, the URI Alumni Award goes to Luke Montabano. The Pell Medal is given to a student who demonstrates excellence in United States history. It's named after our former Senator Pell, Rhode Island. This year, the medal goes to F. Nelson Blount. The Penn Book Award. This award goes to a junior who best exemplifies the characteristics of Benjamin Franklin, a scholar, innovator, and one who serves the community. The student is to be a leader demonstrating high personal and academic integrity, it must be highly respected by peers and faculty. This year, the Penn Book Award goes to a woman who exemplifies all those things, Barbara Wu.
The Harvard Prize Book Award is given to an outstanding junior who displays excellence in scholarship and has high character combined with achievement in other fields. And this year, the Harvard Prize goes to Luke Montabano. It doesn't guarantee you acceptance in the Harvard, but it's a nice award. <laughs> Claire Fry Monologue Contest winner. Claire Fry established the Monologue Contest in 2000 while teaching theater at St. Andrews School. Upon her retirement in 2006, we renamed the competition in her honor. Some of our students recently competed in the Claire Fry Monologue Contest, and we want to recognize the first place winner for 2015 with a certificate and a check. This year, it is Hannah Pork. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah will come on stage, and as is our tradition, will perform Touch Screen by Marshall Davis Jones. This is a spoken word piece about the crisis of the digital world we live in and how we are losing touch with humanity. Welcome, Hannah. Introducing the new Apple Eye person, complete with multi-touch and volume control. Doesn't it feel good to touch? Doesn't it feel good to touch? Doesn't it feel good to touch? My world is so digital that I have forgotten what that feels like. It used to be hard to connect when friends form cliques, but it's even more difficult to connect now that cliques form friends. But who am I to judge? I face Facebook more than books face me, hoping to book face to faces. I update my status 420 spaces to prove that I am still breathing. Failure to do this daily means my whole web wide world will forget that I exist. But with 3,000 friends online, only five I can count in real life, why wouldn't I spend more time in a world where there are more people that like me? Wouldn't you? Here, it does not matter if I am an amateur person, as long as I have a profile. My smile is 50% genuine, 50% genuine HD. You would need Blu-rays to see the white on my teeth, but I'm not that focused. 10 tabs open, hoping my problems can be resolved with a 1600 by 1700 resolution. This is a problem with this evolution. Doubled over, we used to sit in treetops till we swung down and stood upright. Then somebody slipped a disc, and now we're doubled over at desktops. From the Garden of Eden, to the branches of Macintosh. Apple picking has always come at a great cost. iPod, iMac, iPhone, iChat, I can do all of these things without making eye contact. We used to sprint to pick and store blackberries. Now we run to the sprint store to pick blackberries. It's scary, I can't hear the sound of mother nature speaking over all of this tweeting, and along with it is our ability to feel as it's fleeting. You would think these headphone jacks inject into the flesh the way we connect to disconnect. Power on, but we are powerless, they got us love drug like e-pills so we e-trade email emotion and e-commerce because now money can buy love for $9.95 a month click to proceed to the checkout click to X out where our hearts once were click I'm uploading this hug I hope he gets it click I'm making love to my husband I hope he's logged on click I'm holding my daughter over a Skype conference call as she's crying in the crib in the next room over click so when my phone goes off on my hip I touch and I touch and I touch because in a world where there are voices that are only read and laughter is never heard I'm so desperate to feel that I wish the technologic could reverse the universe so the screen could touch me back. And maybe one day it will when our technology is advanced enough to make us human again. Thank you. The Beverly Colvin Choral Award. This award honors Beverly Colvin, who is the mother of Mrs. Molo. She was the administrative assistant to four headmasters at St. Andrew's School, including me, over a period of 17 years. And she loved choral music, sang well herself. This year, the Colvin Choral Award goes to Hannah Chase.
the Alfin T. Gould Memorial Theater Award. Mr. Gould was the assistant headmaster at St. Andrews School from 1945 until his retirement in 1972. He taught a wide array of subjects, founded the school's thespian society, and was the guiding hand of the NET school letter, newsletter. For many alumni who remember him fondly, he was the heart and soul of St. Andrews during his tenure. And through this award, which was established in 2002, he's remembered for the leadership, his selfless dedication, and warm personality that endeared him to all who crossed his path. The Alfin T. Gould Memorial Theater Award is presented to an upper school student who demonstrates outstanding commitment to and the pursuit of excellence in theater arts. And this year it is given to Colton McAdams. The Robert W. Schantz Award. This is given in memory of Robert W. Schantz, who is the grandfather of Susanna Schantz, class of 2005. It is an award given for the graduating senior who has improved the most during his or her years at St. Andrew's School. We heard from this young person last night, uh, a, a great improvement, a wonderful young woman, Dominique Thompson. Ask my friend Vicki Posner, class of 2002, to please come to the podium. This award is given by Vicki, class of 2002. By the way, she was a King medalist. It's presented to the junior who demonstrates great school spirit and leadership. And this year, the Vicki Posner Class of 2002 Spirit Award. And by the way, she's the one that started the bonfire, right? You started the bonfire after a uh, senior dinner. Uh, this year, the 2002 Spirit Award goes to Sydney Morin. Martin Zimmerman Student Award is given to honor Martin Zimmerman, who was a student here from 1997 to 1998. It's sponsored by the Texera family of Barrington and given to a student who best exemplifies Martin's love of learning in addition to his love of St. Andrew's School. A certificate and check uh, in, in the, an engraved plaque, which is given in, uh, displayed in Gardner Hall. This year, the Zimmerman Student Award is given to Vaso Vuko Savalich. The Texera family also sponsored another Zimmerman Award and is given to the varsity basketball player who best represents the qualities of sportsmanship, team spirit, and effort exemplified by Martin Zimmerman, and this year is given to Duncan Osborne. We have two Athlete of the Year awards to go. Um, this year, the young woman who's going to win the Athlete of the Year is to Hannah Bork. The athlete of the year for young man is Vaso Vukasavi. Sportsmanship Award. We again offer two awards, one to a young woman and a young man. 
Uh, Jen Quarles is the female winner of the Sportsmanship Award. And Nick Wood Perry, Sportsmanship Award for Men. St. Andrews has been blessed with uh, generous donors who throughout the years have left money for scholarship for colleges. We give some of these awards tonight and some tomorrow. Uh, this tonight we offer the Elizabeth H. Green Scholarships. Uh, they are a scholarship uh, for one year for college uh, and uh, the, there are a series of people who will get these awards. The first one goes to Hannah Bork. I should say they're $1,000 a piece, so they're, I hope that helps for college. Anders Brandon. <laughs> Nas Cotton. Waka Akwenzi. <laughs> Wyatt Martino. Colton McAdams. <laughs> Owen Robinson. Max Schuster. <laughs> and Vaso. Now we have a special presentation, the Jeff Tabor Scholarship Award. It's my honor to present this for the very first time. And I'm going to ask Greg Tabor and Ashley Tabor to come up to the podium, please. Several members of Jeff's family have joined us this evening, including his granddaughter, Ashley, who graduated from St. Andrew's School in 2002, and his son, Greg, who has worked many years alongside of Jeff in the family business. The family intends that this scholarship of $2,500 be awarded annually to a student attending St. Andrew's School toward the tuition. The recipient is to reflect the qualities of character demonstrated by the school's dear friend, Jeff Tabor. Mr. Tabor served as a trustee on the board from 1987 to 2007. He took time from running his local business to volunteering to help the school in so many ways for so many years. He exuded enthusiasm, kindness, humor, and respect for others in his commitment to making St. Andrews a better place. When I 
often saw Mr. Tabor, he'd come into my office and his first question was, how are you doing, John? Uh, he was a dear friend. He's not feeling well. He can't be with us tonight. But we're really happy to have the Tabor family. This year, the first Tabor scholarship goes to Dagoberto Nunez. <laughs> Community Service Award of Excellence. This award is established in 2010 and recognizes upper school students who volunteer a significant number of hours above the school's requirements to benefit the school's community and beyond through service from the heart and volunteerism with a cheerful spirit during the course of this academic year. The 100 Hour Club recognizes the following students with their certificate for serving well for over 100 hours. There are a lot of names and I'm gonna ask them all to come up here. We're gonna give them a round of applause. Because one of the things we believe at St. Andrews is service. We believe strongly in that. Um, if you're a freshman, you graduate with at least 100 hours of community service, and most of our students do more than that. So uh, this year, we want to recognize Mind Akaramanset. Please come up. Doug Anthony, Enya Audet, Hannah Bork, Rachel Bork, Chantel Carnas, Tony Chang, Mulatto Sissoko, James Coffey, Harrison Dolgarian, Chancellor Ellis, Tyler Frails, Courtney Geet, Charlie Hahn, Johnny Liu, Colton McAdams, Luke Montabano, Theater Montabano, Devin Olorinde, Madison Peck, Jake Pellegrino, Mark Reed, Luke Rovillard, William Robinson, Ashley Shapiro, Cole Swider, Dominique Thompson, Vaso Vukasovic, Kyle White, and Barbara Wu. And every year we recognize the Gold Club. We recognize one student for exceptional service of 234 hours on campus benefiting the St. Andrews community during the 2014-15 academic year. This year we present the certificate and gift card to Max Schuster. And we want to thank our, we thank all the students here and all the students for all the countless hours they did in soup kitchens and everywhere else. They did a wonderful job. We want to thank them for all their efforts. Thank you very much. All right, the last three awards are the Headmaster's Awards. Um, these are things that I instituted when I first came here. It's my pleasure to offer them. Uh, these are students that have done a great job in each grade. We recognize their talent, their enthusiasm, and their joy of being at St. Andrews. The Headmaster's Award in grade nine goes to Theodore Montabano. The 10th grade Headmaster's Award goes to Harrison Dolgarian. <laughs> and for grade 11, the Headmaster Award goes to Bin Bing Ling. We want to congratulate all our award recipients tonight for a job well done. Congratulations. And we look forward to seeing you all here tomorrow morning. It's going to be a wonderful day for the graduation of St. Andrew's School, class of 2015. Have a great night. <laughs>